Amen, amen. Well, good morning, church. Thank you, Tanya, for that and for that challenge and how we want to make sure that we're having a positive response to the gospel. And, you know, that's really what we've been looking at these past few weeks, right? As we've been looking at the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Remember, Hebrews, starting Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, all the way up to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 18. The writer of Hebrews is building this case that Jesus is better, that Jesus is superior, that he is the answer that we've all been looking for. And he builds up this argument showing that that Jesus is better than the sacrificial system, that he is the final sacrifice once and for all, that Jesus is our great high priest. He builds this argument, and then he starts off in verse 19 and says, therefore, in light of all that, in light of these first 10 chapters, first 18 verses of chapter 10, this then is how we should respond. And a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how We need to draw near to God in faith. Last week we talked about how we want to hold on to our confession of our hope. And today we'll look at how we need to watch out for one another. And really look how we can love one another So he says, because of what Christ has done for us, we want to respond in a positive way to the gospel in faith and in hope and in love. So as we are going to dive in here to Hebrews chapter 10 and wrap up this little three-week mini-series, next week we're going to start diving into Isaiah and looking at God's attributes on display in Isaiah, which we've been reading through together as a church. Let it just be reminded to all of us that we are to be his completely, that we are to take a positive response to the gospel. You know, there's different ways that we do that. We do that by gathering together corporately and worshiping. We do that by worshiping him through song. We do that as we gather together and we pray with one another. As we study God's word, we also do that by giving of our tithes and our offerings. So if you're here with us in person, You can drop off your offering in different boxes as you leave the sanctuary this morning. If you're joining us online, you can give online through our app or through our website. You can mail in your tithe or offering. That's just another way that we worship God and we respond positively to the truth of the gospel, what Christ has done for us. So I would love for you now, I hope you've made it to Hebrews chapter 10. I would like for you to stand in honor of the reading of God's word this morning. Uh, My friend Michaela is going to be reading just the last uh, two verses of this section, verses 24 and 25 of Hebrews chapter 10. And let us watch and let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let's go to Lord in prayer this morning. God, we love you. We are thankful for your word. God, we pray that we as your church, as your body of believers, we would watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, that we wouldn't neglect to gather together, but we would encourage each other all the more. God, I pray that you would speak to us through your word this morning, or that you'd turn Lord, our minds, attention, and our hearts, affection to you and to your word. We ask that your spirit would move. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. One thing that I just want to make mention of, for those of you, if you're a guest with us, one way that you can follow along is there are notes that are available. You can download our app. Um, You can just search Fifi Baptist in the Google Play Store or in uh, the Apple Store. And what you can do in the App Store is you can find Fifi Baptist. And then under messages, you can follow along. There's ways to fill in the blanks and follow along with Um, what we're looking at this morning. So I wanted to make mention of that. But it's really interesting. You heard Michaela read it. And again, this is the third thing. And, And because of what Jesus has done for us, what are we supposed to do? And it says that we are to watch out for one another to provoke love and 
good works. We need to take time to watch out. What does this mean, to, to watch out for one another? It means that we, we pay attention and we look for ways to encourage each other, right? We look for ways to encourage each other. One thing that I've um, got to do this last year since you know, we have moved our Wednesday night prayer time, it's been online the last year, right? And so I've been volunteering and helping out uh, with our Awana program, our Awana club on Wednesday nights. And I've had the privilege and honestly sometimes the challenge of working with our Sparkies, okay? That's kindergarten, first, and second grade, and I get uh, a few of those boys who get to come in, and I work with them on their scriptures. And our boys are awesome. They also have, imagine, you know, the energy of five, six, seven-year-old boys, right? <clears throat> it's a lot. I always say, if I could just bottle that up, right, and sell it, I would be a millionaire. I'd be Jeff Bezos and taken off into space, right? But with these boys, I'm always thinking, how can I encourage these boys? What can I do? Well, one thing that works with kids, and honestly, it works with, with, with young boys. It works with old men too, right, is provide food, okay? And so I'd, I would start just telling the boys, like, all right, hey, if, we, if you can work on this many verses this week, man, I might bring you some candy next week, right? So some would call it bribery. I call it intelligent, all right? It's proper motivation. But what's really interesting is um, one, of, one of my boys, Michael, um, man, we've been working on it, and so he got some candy. Well, he went and he told his mom about it, and they decided, and um, it was really nice when he said he wanted to get something for me. Since I gave him some, you know, since I was giving them some candy, and so uh, he and his mom, if you all know, we all know what the true nectar of heaven is, right? Dr. Pepper. Okay, and so what they gave me, it was really, really, I think we're going to throw up a picture on there, okay? It was amazing. Look at this. This is Dr. Pepper popcorn, all right? And I was like, it's either going to be incredible or it's going to be disgusting. There's not a lot of middle ground there, right? I wasn't sure, but anytime you can put the nectar of heaven on something, I'm going to give it a try, all right? One of my favorite things down in Texas, there's the, the greatest fast food restaurant ever, Whataburger, and they have a Dr. Pepper milkshake, and it is unbelievable, well, Michael was so kind. Well, really, I should give credit to his mom, Barbie, who was so kind, right? And sent me one Wednesday night, not only Dr. Pepper popcorn, but also just a, a bottle of Dr. Pepper and provided, and it was magical, okay? Wasn't sure, but that popcorn was incredible. But I loved it, and I was encouraged by them. And not only was I encouraged because I love Dr. Pepper, but I know that they knew that I love Dr. Pepper because I'll talk about it sometimes here, right? And I just was blessed that Michael, or Barbie again, maybe give her some credit, <laughs> decided I want to provide something for, you know, for you since you've been Maybe, or maybe it was like, you've been sugaring up my kids, so now I'm going to sugar you up, right? But it was awesome. But what I appreciated so much is they knew that I love Dr. Pepper, so they took the time to get something specifically that I would enjoy, right? And so what we see is what the writer of Hebrews says is, here he builds up this saying, he talks about, man, we start off, we draw near to God because of faith, because Jesus died on the cross and that veil's been torn. We enter into the Holy of Holies and that's incredible. And then he says, you hold on to your confession of hope because God is faithful and God is so good. And you see these two powerful things. And then this is how he ends this section of encouragement. He says, and let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works. Another translation says, let us be considerate of one another 
and figure out how to stir up one another. What God is commanding here, in the same way that he commands us to draw near to him, in the same way that he commands us to hold on to our confession of hope, he says, I am commanding you to be considerate of one another. To be considerate of one another. He says, you take time to watch out. When he says, let us watch out, that means that we are actively looking at our fellow brothers and sisters' lives. And as we are invested in their lives and as we build relationships with them, we find out the best way to encourage them. So as we get to know our brothers and sisters, we figure out ways that we can encourage them. He says, have, embrace a servant's heart when it comes to your brothers and sisters in the faith. Embrace a servant's heart. Now here's the deal. If we're all completely honest, we're all inherently selfish people, aren't we? We're all inherently selfish people and we want to think of ourselves first and our own needs and our own desires and our own wants. And what the writer of Hebrews says, he says, one just huge, glaring example of the fact that Jesus has taken control of your heart and you're living boldly for him and you understand what Christ has done for you is all of a sudden you set aside your own wants and your own desires and you say, I'm going to put other people in front of myself. I want to be selfless and I want to look out for others. I want to look at different ways that I can encourage other people. We get to know each other, and we learn how other people respond to different things. Because people are paying attention, right? So I love Dr. Pepper, I also love coffee, you all know this. So I drink coffee every morning, and um, my oldest son, he loves caffeine, but he is not a fan of coffee, okay? Like most 10 year olds, I feel bad. Maybe it's because I've always told him that coffee will put hair on your chest and he doesn't want that yet. But what's been interesting is he's been coming up the last couple weeks, he's been helping run some different slides and he noticed something. He noticed that Mr. Vance does not drink coffee in the morning. Do you know what Mr. Vance drinks? Mountain Dew. See, we know, right? Mountain Dew. And he went on, I get... He's with his grandparents right now. I get a text from Jill and she goes, and Isaiah is proudly proclaiming to his grandparents, I'm going to be like Mr. Vance when I grow up because I'm going to drink Mountain Dew in the morning. Because <laughs> we don't allow him. Yeah, some of you are like, that's all we need is more sugar and caffeine, right? Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> but here's the deal. He spent some time with Vance, and he noticed what Vance has done, right? And in fact, in what really get, gets me a little bit of trouble and makes me worry about him, and I apologize to Kyle Baller and the youth, because he goes, Dad, man, when I come up and help early in the morning, I know there's Mountain Dew up in the youth lounge. I can just get some from there. I was like, great, no, that is not for you. But you just get to know Vance. You know he loves Mountain Dew. Don't go give him a Starbucks gift card, right? Give him a, a, a gallon of Mountain Dew and you're good to go. But you get to know other people. You learn ways to bless and encourage them. And here's the truth of the matter. We don't need to overcomplicate it, right? Right? We all need encouragement in this world, don't we? And when you're beat down by the world throughout the week, when we come in here, we want to be blessed and encouraged by our brothers and sisters in the faith, don't we? And what we want to do is we need to watch out and look for people in our classes, in the congregation, in our transformation groups, whatever it is who we know might need encouragement. And guess what? If you're breathing, you need encouragement, right? And we look for ways to encourage those people. We need to develop the habit of encouragement. Understand, this is 
an imperative command from God in Scripture to watch out for one another. It says we watch out for one another. Why? To provoke love and good works. To promote, to pro- provoke love and good works. So we're talking about just positive provocation here. Positive provocation. Now, oftentimes when you hear the word provoke, I think of it in like the negative sense, right? I have two boys. My oldest, Isaiah, knows exactly what words to say to provoke his younger brother, right? And it's always, Caleb hit me. And it's always, well, I'm always like, well, if he hit you, what did you say, right? And he knows how to provoke. And when we think of provoke, we think about that often, right? I'm going to do something or needle you to get a reaction. And this is in the positive sense. In this passage, the word provoke has a positive connotation, has a positive connotation. What it's saying is we need to intentionally do things to stir, to to prod, to provoke other people to love and to good works. We need to make sure that we are making a positive impact in our brothers and sisters in the faith. What? can we do to stir up one another so that they do big things for God? How can we encourage people to do big things for God? When at at my previous church in Texas for our vacation Bible school, we did this big push to raise money for missions. Okay, and when you're dealing with kids, sometimes you bribe them with food, and one of the best ways to have them do any sort of challenge is you put guys against girls, right? Boys against girls. And we said, hey, at the end of the week of this VBS, boys and girls are going to raise money. And at the, end of the, at the end of the week, whoever has more money, if the boys have raised more money, uh, Jill and I were kind of helping lead this VBS. They're like, we, we were going to jump. It was a space theme. And so they said, we're going to dump like the liquid contents of a Milky Way on someone's head. Okay. So like if the boys get enough money, well, then we're going to dump it on Jill's head. If the girls get enough money, well, it'll dump on on my head. And unfortunately, my boys didn't come through for me. Okay, so I I have a couple of these pictures. And I think Jill's taking a little too much joy in that. And you can see I'm covered, and you'd think, again, this is one of those things, it could be really good, like it was melted ice cream and like this caramel sauce and all this other kind of weird stuff, but when it was poured on me, it was hot and it was disgusting. And I just didn't really want to vomit in there, but it was really, really gross. But they raised thousands of dollars for missions, VBS kids. And this was a way to positively provoke things. Hey, let's dump something on the pastor's head, okay? And it worked to raise money. Those kids went crazy. I don't know if you know this, like, luckily we haven't had to do something like that to raise money for missions, but if you just, I don't know if you know this, in the midst of pandemic, everything like that, um, we look back and at least in the last seven years, you know that our giving to Annie Armstrong is the highest it's been in at least the last seven years. We set a goal. Midst of a pandemic, we not only met that goal, but we said, but why do we set goals like that? Why does the missions committee pray and do it? We set these goals to provoke people and say, hey, let's give so that North America can be reached. Or even the same thing with, with Lottie Moon. Let's give so that global missions can continue. Now, I don't know if you know this now, we just uh, found out one of the students who grew up in this church. If you all know Darcy Weber, just uh, got appointed. She's going to be uh, in the journeyman program through the IMB. She's gonna go spend two years overseas serving the Lord, just graduated college. I always tell people, I'm a Southern Baptist for two reasons. Number one, because doctrinally we're sound. We stand firm on the Bible. Number two, I love the cooperative program. 
So what it means is that as we pool together money and resources, Darcy, instead of spending time traveling around trying to raise money so that she might be able to go overseas, the Southern Baptist Convention through the International Mission Board is going to support her for two years to go overseas and serve on mission for God. Aren't we so thankful for that? And that's us stirring up one another. We're, we're giving sacrificially to support missions and so that the next generation, people like Darcy, might be willing to go overseas and take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We want to stir up one another to do big things for God. You know, not only that, but we need to make sure that we build one another up in word and in deed. You know, Ephesians 4.29 says that we shouldn't let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths, right? But only that which is for building up one another. If you know that band, Building 429, that's how they got the name of their band, was from Ephesians 429. And so we need to build up each other in word. Build up each other in word. Be there to encourage one another. You know, it was really, really interesting. I was talking with with Kevin Kurtz yesterday, and he was sharing how he said the Chadwicks are like second parents to him. He said, man, when I need encouragement three times, he said, it doesn't matter what time it is at night. He said, I can just call them. It doesn't matter the time. He says, and they'll pray for me. They're there for me. As, had, as he's had this incredible, difficult battle, recovering from COVID and everything that's been going on with all of that, you know, you need that type of encouragement, right? And to know I can call on someone in my church family at any time to get the prayer and to get the encouragement that I need. You need to build each other up in word. Look for someone and think, how can I pray them. If you really want to bless someone in this church, just go up to them and say, how can I pray for you this next week? Build each other up in word, but also in deed. Build up each other in word and in deed. There's something about serving with fellow brothers and sisters in the faith. You know, I was a youth pastor for a lot of years, and it was always it was always funny to me because I'd have parents and they'd be like, I don't understand. My kid won't clean their room and yet they're signing up to go on a Saturday morning to go with you and mow someone's lawn. You know what I mean? <laughs> like what's going on here? It doesn't seem to make sense. And I was like, well, it's really simple. They're not cleaning their room with their friends, right? But they're going with their friends and they're being encouraged and they're going and they're serving others selflessly. Like now they need to grow in maturity and realize they need to be obedient to their parents and mark of Christian maturity is them cleaning their rooms. But hey, it's all, we're all works in progress, right? But it's so interesting to me how those students, as they got together, they had no problem going and doing things like that and going and selflessly serving. You know, we have a group of students leaving in just a couple of weeks to head up to Minneapolis, Minnesota, to go and to do a, a mission trip this summer. Be praying for them. But why are they willing to give up a week of their summer to go and to serve? Well, I think it's because they're not doing ministry alone, right? And that's something for us. One simple way for us to encourage each other is don't do ministry alone. Don't do ministry alone. If you're going to do something, invite somebody along with you. Talk with them and say, hey, let's go and serve here together. Let's do something. Let's provoke one another to love and good works. To love and good works. Let's speak life to one another and let's do something together, right? Let's work on that, church. Let's serve with each other. The cheerful heart. And he says, not only do we watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, what else does he say? He says, not neglecting to gather 
together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. So the last thing that the writer of Hebrews says is don't neglect gathering together. Don't neglect gathering together. Now, how many of you guys have heard of this guy, Aaron Rodgers? Have you heard of him, this quarterback? He won the MVP last year. Pretty important player for the Green Bay Packers. Well, they had their voluntary OTAs last month. It's just time for they get together and they work and they train. And Aaron Rodgers is mad at the team for, for a variety of reasons, all this other stuff. I don't know. I don't like the Packers. I hope he stays away, right? But what he did, instead of showing up to voluntary OTAs with his team, he was in Hawaii with his girlfriend. And as his team was practicing, he is posting pictures on Instagram like at a waterfall in Hawaii. And here's the thing. This guy, quarterback, MVP, should be a leader of the team. Instead of showing up and practicing, what is he doing? He's off on vacation having fun. Look what it says. Don't neglect to gather together, but encourage each other. Aaron Rodgers can't be an encouragement to his team when he's not at practice, right? And he's sending a message. I don't need to be there. It's really interesting. As you look at the, the pandemic in this last year, and we know a lot of people were unable to worship for a lot of variety of valid reasons, health reasons, other things like that. But I also know at first, you know, when the pandemic hit, you know, the sale of Bibles went through the roof. Sale of Bibles went through the roof. And yet as they studied the Bible reading habits of Americans last year, you know, last year was the lowest level of people engaging in scripture in America it, since they've been studying it for over 60 years. Lowest level of scriptural engagement. Do we have any idea why that is? Well, I think I know why. We're not meant to do this alone, are we? We're not meant to do it alone. We're meant to be here for each other, to encourage one another. And here's what it says. He says, one of the easiest and best ways to encourage each other, the writer of Hebrews says, is simply to attend corporate worship with one another. As we gather together with one another. I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning, right? Because you're here. But as we gather together, we're able to encourage one another. It's really interesting. I, I, Dave Shepard came up to me, and this was a couple months ago now, and I told him, just so you know, I'm going to use that as a sermon illustration. But he came up and he said, and he, you know, he'd been worshiping online for quite some time. He had a variety of reasons for doing that. And, and he'd even, you know, he'd text me sometimes, man, I like this sermon, I like that. But he came up to me after he, he'd been here in worship for the first time in months. He said, Zach, he said, the only way I can describe it, he goes, the difference is it's like when you're watching a game on TV and you're watching a game in person. He goes, you feel the crowd, you feel, he goes, it said, it's just totally different. He said, it's not the same. He said, I love being here with the church. And so again, this isn't a, I want to guilt or shame anyone. There's a lot of people who worship online for a long time for a variety of reasons. But I will say is if it is safe for you to gather back together, it is commanded by God for us to gather together and worship because ultimately we aren't meant to do it alone, are we? We aren't meant to do it alone. I read an article the other day and it talked about how the rugged individualism of America is a myth. The rugged individualism of America is a myth. And I thought that was so good because all of us were kind of taught, just pull yourself up by, the, by your bootstrap, just work harder, try, be, you know, try more, just be a better person. You can do it. It's all on you. And the Bible says, no, you're not meant to do it on, on your own. We're supposed to be in community with one another. 
We need to build each other up, provoke one another for love and for good works. He says, we are created for community. We're created for community. He says, we don't neglect to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but we encourage each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. Ultimately, what the writer of Hebrews is telling us is he says, Jesus went to the cross for your sins and for mine. When we understand what Jesus did on the cross, man, it changes the way that we live. And it should make us look for ways to engage in our faith with one another. It should make us look for ways to engage in hope with one another. It should make us look for ways to engage in love with one another. And ultimately, what the writer of Hebrews is telling us is the gospel unites us and we are truly better together, aren't we? We're better together. We're not meant to do it alone. So let's love each other by watching out for one another, by looking, considering how we can stir one another up for love and for good deeds. We need to worship together corporately. We need to encourage each other. We need to bear one another's burdens. We respond positively to the gospel in faith and hope and in love. So I just want to challenge you this morning as I've shared about what we're supposed to do based on what Christ has done. Maybe you're sitting out here and you're saying, well, you know what? I can't respond positively that way yet because I've never made a decision to follow Christ. I want to challenge you this morning. Understand that Jesus loved you so much. He went to the cross on your behalf. And he died for your sins and for mine. And the Bible says that if you just trust in him, repent and turn to him, that you can be saved. If you've never made that decision to follow Christ, to trust in him, I'd love to talk with you about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You can meet me in the Welcome Center. Right after the service, so we can talk about what it means to be a follower of Christ. If you're worshiping with us online, and just comment right now on our Facebook feed, or just email us, connect at fifibc.org. We can talk about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And for those of you who've already made that decision to trust in Christ, I want to challenge you. Be intentional. Maybe it's just one person, but who is one person in the body of Christ that you can encourage this next week? It might not be Dr. Pepper, popcorn, or Mountain Dew. But you can figure out a way to encourage someone. Just invite them to lunch or a cup of coffee. Give them a call and let them know that you're praying for them. Send a letter or a card. We, church, have to be in the habit of watching out for one another. This last year has been difficult. We know not just the physical toll of a pandemic, but the psychological toll, right? And people need encouragement. So let's watch out for one another. Let's stir one another up. Let's provoke one another for love and good works. If you're going to go and do some act of service, don't do it alone. Invite someone from the body to come along with you. We truly are better together, church. We're better together. So let's unite. Let's stir up one another for love and good deeds. Let's draw near to God together. Let's hold on to that hope that we have. And let's be a shining light for Christ in a world, in a community that so desperately needs it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, we love you. We're so thankful for your word. God, I pray that we would be a church that is watching out for one another, that is stirring up, that is provoking one another to love and to good works. God, I pray even right now, you might place someone on our hearts that we know we need to encourage this next week. And God, I pray that you would use our church for as we unite together as we are better together. And God, I pray right now, if there's anyone in this room or anyone watching online that's never made that decision to trust in you, God, I pray 
that right now, God, your spirit would soften their heart or that you'd draw them to yourself. So we ask that you'd be with us now. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. I want to let you know if you're a visitor or guest for the first time, I'd love to meet you in our Welcome Center. We have a free gift that we like to give to each and every one of our visitors. We're so glad you're here to worship with us this morning. Now let me challenge you. If you want to talk about encouraging one another, head to a Bible study. Get to know other people a little bit better and learn how you can encourage them this next week. So head on now. We'll have Bible study classes starting at 945. Thanks so much. Have a great morning. God bless you.